Well, hello folks. Well, this is episode 5 of our 18th season here at Riga FC. I'm the Custard Prophet and this is the Latvian job and this might be where it all ends. Our main goal this uh, save was to win a European competition with Riga. I thought it might be the Conference League but we but we graduated very quickly from ever playing in that. But actually, after spending a lot of time in the Champions League, we're here at the Europa League Finals, which is massive and we'll be playing Tottenham today and the winner of this will be crowned Europa Cup winners. Hopefully it's going to be us. Right folks, yes. So I've got a lot of a lot of nerves and I'm hugely excited at the same time. So on the on the channel uh, for those who've been watching a while uh, may be aware of this we've not been that successful in Europe and that tends to be because we are managing tiny clubs in um, lower uh, reputation European leagues so uh, but we did actually get to a couple of European finals and in both of those we lost so with Gotna from Sweden uh, we got to the conference league uh, final but we lost there and with Liège RFC Liège we got to the conference league again final and lost there so here we come with Riga. I think this, the, the quality aside we got here is much better than we had with either of those two. But we're coming up against Tottenham. It's a neutral venue and we just don't know how the boys are going to deal with this. Are they going to be able to stand up and be counted or are they going to struggle uh, against a quality Tottenham side? And there's something happened which is going to make it infinitely harder for us to make this uh, get this, for this victory. Yeah, so... We've got a bit of a problem with uh, a clash. It's the bloody Balkans Cup again. It's come back to haunt us. And unfortunately, all of our top Latvian players are not available to play in this. So it's absolutely gutting for them. So no Lysinovs, he can't play. Um, I wanted to lead the line with him. Zalmanis, he's a useful option on, on the bench, can't play. Backup goalkeeper Razsedovic, nope, he can't play either. And neither does backup left back Wienberg so all of those players it doesn't affect our, affect our first team too much um, but it does mean that we are we're, we're a lot weaker on the bench and considering the bench for some reason is 12 people I don't really understand that but the big news is that Bozovic is back so this is how we did since the uh, that 4-0 victory over Chelsea in the second leg we were on a bit of a high and we came came crashing down from that with a nil-nil draw away against Meta. Disappointing, but you can kind of understand it. We have then won the next uh, three games, 5-0 against Alder, 2-0 against uh, Varmir, and then 5-0 against Ventspils. But the funny thing is, because we've, we're so many games behind, five games behind Spartax, six games behind Valmiria, and so we are actually... Uh, only third in the league and I can't remember the last time we've been this far back in the league but you know you can you can understand it Dynamo Riga for some reason also haven't played many games but uh, yeah even you know you can see here more games being played here and where where's where's our match we're going to be playing Tuckums there or will we will we because if we do beat Tottenham if we beat them that's it that's it save completed um there was, I did suggest in the last episode we might think about going on to try and win the Champions League, but does anyone actually really want to do that? I think I'll be massively pleased just to just to take a Riga to a European final and win that. That would be massive if we can do that. Huge step. You know, we we're not we're certainly not um, predicting that we're going to do that. I think it's going to be really challenging, and we know how badly we've done away from home. So. Right, I'm putting it off, aren't I? I'm putting it off. Let's go and see what we can do. Um, let's have a look at the team. Team that we're going with, and it's a similar one, Mendia finds himself back on the bench. So Saulo, Sitz and Kavara are our front three. You're thinking, well, how is Sitz playing? Well, he hung up, if you remember, he hung up his international boots at the start of this season. So he's basically just guaranteed himself a start here. And he did score the crucial goal against Chelsea. Uh, the third goal, which um, meant that we were victorious. 
Bozovic, Igor Jose and Chiadio, who's been a little bit on the poorer side today, uh, this, this season. But, you know, I'm hoping for big things from him. Uh, and then Nye on the left of defence, but Bajekic on the right, and then Rasmussen and Pedraza in the middle with Kleber Francesco behind them in goal. I've got 12 people on the bench, a whole load of jo- uh, junkies. <laughs> we haven't got any junkies on the bench. Whole whole load of um, young players, including this guy who potentially could be one of the uh, the new breed of players. He's come through the youth team, and I reckon he could certainly. Um, he can certainly play for a place in there in uh, in the future. Right, should we do it? Let's go. Let's go. Right, huge game, biggest game in the history of Riga. This one is. We are the home team in the neutral venue. Uh, look at the size of this. It's absolutely. We're we're out in Georgia in uh, uh, Tbilisi, Dynamo Tbilisi Stadium. It looks massive. I'm sure it's not this big. And here we come. We're out. Right, let's go. Let's go. What can we do? Nothing happening so far, but here's Bozovic. Oh, and Saulo. That felt like that was a real chance. So, uh, really very little going on. And um, I was a little concerned at the back there that we might be uh, losing it. But here's... It's back to the goalkeeper. Just into into the uh, the two centre-backs. Here's Rasmussen. Goes wide into Nye. Looks like this, we're struggling just to to get out here. Sits is on this this left side for some reason. Nye's not getting forward. And there we go. We have finally broken. Got some space here. Here's Chiadio. Come on, ball in. Salo and the goalkeeper. I think that just hit the post and went wide. So. Slow start. So we get to half time. It's nil nil. Nothing really in it between either of the sides. Um, we're not being as creative as I would have liked. Right, we've motivated Saulo, which can only be a good thing. Come on. Second half, we swap Bozovic and Chiadio around as well. I hope just to be a bit more creative. Let's go positive. Well, late chance here. 84 minutes on. It's nil nil. Nothing, nothing doing really. Here's Alan. This would be harsh. This would be too harsh. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I'm concerned. I'm. It's tight, and we're just not very good. Oh, it's off the bar. It's off the bar. That's the closest anyone's come. My God. We look like we're slowly being played out of this. They're doing well. They're closing us down. The ball is long up there. Here's Sally. He has won it. Sits. It's through. Oh, yes. Yes. There it is. I thought he'd missed it. I thought he'd gone wide. That was a dreadful bit of defensive work from the goalkeeper there. Well, not the goalkeeper. The whoever that was, the defender. Look at this again. Saulo does brilliantly and sits. He puts it through. And at this point, I don't know, he tries to put it back to the goalkeeper and... Well, what a finish there. We are going to... Uh, we, we're not far away from potentially winning a European Cup, folks. Oh, it's gone. Final whistle's gone. I was just about to make a sub. We didn't even make a sub. What an end into that game. We were... It was tight as you like. And we did it. We managed to win it. I thought... I thought that chance was going to them, I have to say. But we actually won the thing without making a single substitution. I just didn't think we had what we needed on the bench. Maybe Mendia could have come on on the right side, maybe. But Bajekic was playing well. But we just weren't getting anything out of the midfield. But Tottenham weren't really doing anything either. And Saulo scored in the second minute of added on time. Wow. Look how look how much Tottenham came back into that in the second half. And here we go. Here we go. Is that, there we go. There I am. Already up there. Saulo, is that Saulo leading the uh, leading the line? Yeah, I think it is. No, that'd be Chiadio, won't it? Chiadio, Captain Chiadio. There he is. Oh, look at this, Victors, Europa League Victors. 
Oh, never doubted it in a second. What a save this has been. Absolutely brilliant. I didn't think we would do it, to be honest. It just seemed like everything was... We just, we just seemed like we were just a little bit, always just a little bit backwards. And even in the Europa League, coming up against some of the really better side at the latter stages, we needed to do, we needed to be better. But in the end, I feel XG suggests we deserved it. Certainly, we'd had the better first half. We had limited chances in the second half, but we did finish one of them. What a result. What an absolute result this is. Let's uh, let's just go and have a quick look what that means for uh, Riga FC. So that is the first time, I think I'm pretty right, oh yeah, I'm certainly right in saying this, the first time a Latvian side has ever won a, uh, a major European trophy. So uh, that is absolutely brilliant. And for Saulo to do it, £48 million signing, it proves it was absolutely right to, to, to spend some money on him. And uh, he's done well. He's he's done he's done absolutely brilliantly um, since he's been at this club uh, from from Real. Absolutely fantastic. Let's see what the uh, the fans are saying about this. Yeah, it was <laughs> fouls by Riga. So we yeah we 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 didn't help here, but it doesn't matter, does it? We had a we had a cracking run. We beat Marseille in the first knockout round. We beat uh, Atalanta in the second knockout round. Then it was Sporting Lisbon, then Chelsea, and that was the big one. And Tottenham, probably an easier prospect than Chelsea, but he's away from home in the, um, in a, well, it's not away from home, but in a neutral venue, it becomes a little bit more tricky. You think, you imagine the Tottenham fans have gone out there in, um, in great numbers. And you can see here, Tottenham won it just two years ago, so they, uh, you know, they, they, they've got, they've got history. Seven point three five million pounds for beating Tottenham in that final that's nice and um, here of the 24 players getting the medals including the the, the the ones who were on the bench I think this is everyone who ever was involved at any time so that's that's pretty awesome yeah including those four who were who were on the bench that has, where does that put me? Ninth in the uh, Hall of Hall of Fame. Yeah, that helps with the uh, the domestic cup wins, but the the European trophy win that's uh, that's massive. And look, it's been a reputation boost as well. We have we're now a three and a half star reputation side. I think we were just three before, so that's that's going to help. And there we go, biggest overachievers. No one would would have thought this would have, have been the outcome, but what a what a wonderful wonderful thing that is! Absolutely thrilled. We're, we're paying a little bit of money to various players, including this lad who gets about two grand. I mean, why not? Why the heck not? Finances wise, I imagine we're looking pretty good after that, and that I think guarantees us a quali uh, qualification for the Champions League as well. Yeah, it doesn't actually say here anymore. I think it's it's very very confused as to how many spots we've got. But yeah, what what a ride it's been. Let's just also just see how Riga what that did to Riga's position in the uh, in the coefficients. So we were 16th and actually that gives us 107. So we will be pushing back up above the likes of um, Milan, Borussia Dortmund, Chelsea, we go above Feyenoord, we go above. Um, that is that is awesome. Don't quite get above uh, Atletico, but almost there. So we're, you know, almost getting into the top 10 teams in European football, which is enormous. But what about for the nation? We're currently 14th. Again, that's going to do some great things for us. Although 8.125, why are we so low? Looks like we are going to be dropping a little bit here, which is frustrating. We will go, yeah, below. I think we drop down one. I think is is all that happens. So that's not too too terrible. So Denmark, I think, will go ahead of us. Almost. 
uh, gone above Belgium almost, but um, yeah, not not quite. Oh well, yeah. There we go. There we go, folks. What a fantastic save this has been. There we go. This is our. This is what we've done. Twenty. Um, I don't think all of those were us, but um, the vast majority. But twenty Versliga trophies, fifteen Latvian cups, and a Europa League, uh, which is pretty, pretty darn good. Let's have a look at some of the um, some of the players here in the best. This is the best eleven. The best eleven ever. How is Reynolds in there? I guess he played more games. Um, yeah, some great names back there. Bajekic, sort of in there. Pantalev, I forgot all about him. Yao Kiadio has been an absolute stalwart player. Raymond's Krollis, he did so much in those early years, didn't he? Absolutely so important for us. Robert Zoldrick is another really important Latvian player. And uh, many other players who were absolutely brilliant for us. This is last year's. You look at this, the likes of Saulo, some some great players in here. But you sort of look back a little bit to times like this, where we had uh, this this lad Santiago Vieira. There's been some really good players, probably more recently. So Bamba, Soliman Bamba, he's at Celta Vigo, worth absolutely loads of money. Alisson, he is worth loads of money. <laughs> Uh, Lorenzo, not quite so much money. Kavic, he was... I mean, I, I'm surprised he's done so well. Samir, another player that I thought we could really make the most of. And we only had him for a very short period of time. Doing brilliantly. You know, the Kiat, he was great as well. 72, 73 million pounds at Oren. The amount of players that we've lost in this process it has been so so challenging anyway folks let me know what you thought of that it's been utterly brilliant love the ride thank you so much for the support on this series um i think it's the right time to end it may well think about going back to the um liege save because there was there was unfinished business there i do like my one club saves um and, and do that alongside the uh, the, the ABC journeyman, but not 100% sure quite what we'll do football manager wise uh, wise now um, outside of the uh, of the journeyman save that we've got going. But hopefully I'll have something for you. Anyway, folks, I think this this is it. What a wonderful wonderful way to finish first European trophy I've won in a long time on football manager. Certainly, it's the first one on the YouTube channel. It's not the Champions League, but it's the next best thing, isn't it? I may well do a little bit of this behind the scenes to see what we can do with this side now and whether the reputation bonus helps us keep hold of players. Maybe it will. Not sure. Uh, but that's it, I think, for the YouTube channel for, for this particular save. Anyway, folks, I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. <laughs> or if, you, if, if this is the first one you've watched and you want to know how we've got here, it's only about 140 videos to get all the way to this point. So, it's, it's, you know, it's not going to take you too long. So why don't you do that? And I'll see you in another save at some point in the future. Goodbye. <laughs>